looking for a way out I can't find my way now I just need you by my side Lately I've been thinking baby we could get Hi everyone, it's Carrie with Elite Nails and welcome back to another video on my channel. In this video today, I am going to talk about what I think a new nail tech should have to start out. I had one of my Instagram followers ask me if I would do a video like this. And I thought, what a great idea. I didn't even think of, of sharing my experiences of what I thought I needed in the beginning of my career as a nail tech. What a great opportunity to be able to share my thoughts, um, my opinions. I don't know, maybe you guys can take something away from this video that might help you. Now, having said that, getting my thoughts together for this video today was a little bit more challenging than I thought it would be in being that must-haves for a new nail tech. Well, me being a new nail tech, my budget was pretty much zip. I, I didn't, like, there wasn't a budget. Uh, there wasn't a lot of money to go around. I think in my very first video, I shared with you guys that I became a nail tech to supplement my income and work. Now, having said that, there's some nail techs just out of school that wanna do nails full time. So anything that I share with you in this video today are my thoughts and my feelings and other nail techs that may have been in the industry a lot longer than I have may have different views and may have a must have, if you will, for a new tech that I didn't even think of. So this is, I'm, I'm just gonna share with you what I think a new tech should have. And <laughs> it's kind of difficult because there are things that I feel that a nail tech should have, but I don't know how many brand new nail techs have the budget for a uh, an expensive item, like a, a event or an e-file. So I've got my notes down here. I'm just gonna go through them. I am going to show you guys some products that I think um, could be a good idea for a must have, and uh, we'll just go from there. First and foremost, I would say that the number one thing, if you will, that a nail tech must have is certification. Those of you that want to be a nail tech, please get your certification. I just feel that that is so, so important. For me, I actually will share this with you. I thought of doing nails without going to school because I had done acrylic on myself for like 20 some odd years, but I learned so much by going to school, things that I would not have known had I not gone to school. So please get your certification. That's the beginning to, I don't know what I feel is a step in the right direction. And I think you would, you will be on your way to a, in my experience, a very rewarding career. Number two, set goals for yourself and set reachable goals, especially when you're first starting out. Um, what did I have for goals? I wanted, I mean, first and foremost, I knew that I wanted to have a dust vent system in my studio. That was number one. I needed a desk, I needed a vent, I needed storage. So I wanted something all in one. And I've done a video on my uh, fusion dust removal system that I purchased from Nail Techniques here in Kelowna. That goal for me took two years to accomplish. Um, because of budget, you have bills to pay and overhead and products to buy. So that was a goal for me. I didn't give myself a time limit. I just knew that that was something that I wanted. Um, so set goals for yourself, make them reachable. I think especially in the very beginning, set small goals for yourself. Practicing putting color as close to your cuticle as possible. Practice that. Um, um, set a goal to improve your shaping. Set goals to attend classes. I know here in Kelowna, there are many classes that um, go on in the city. I know uh, with nail techniques, they do have like two hour classes, they have four hour classes, they have all day classes and weekend, or like two day classes, not necessarily on a weekend, but two day classes depending on what the, um, I guess, topic is to learn. And you can take uh, classes like advanced shaping. I took an advanced 
shaping class and that was four hours long and I found that that was affordable for me and it really really helped improve my filing um, being able to use an e-file uh, learning what to look for when shaping and then I also took another class back in March of um, salon shapes with Carmen Hayward and that was a full day and I, I, I went away from that class learning even more so those were goals that I had set for myself and I achieved them I reached them um, little goals like putting money aside from each um, time you do a service to save up to buy a product that you want or a collection that you want. So sit down, write out some goals for yourself, but make sure that they are reachable because when you reach a goal, you feel like, oh wow, I did it and I can do this. And then you move on to the next goal and then the next one and the next one. And then before you know it, you've, I don't know, been in the industry for years and you can look around at your salon or your business and think, wow, I can't believe how far I've come. And I think for me, it's really rewarding to reach each of those goals and to accomplish them. So that would be a must have for a new tech, set some goals. Um, I think some must haves for nail techs, new nail techs that might not be immediately obtainable are a dust filtration system. I think that that's pretty important to have. And if you can't afford, I know there's the Nova Flare out there, there's the one that I have, which is the Fusion Dust Removal System, there's the Valentino, there's, I think there's K-Line. So there's even, um, I got this one in school, and this is just a little dust extractor. Um, it wasn't that expensive. I was, I did purchase a lot of must-haves in school because they were, for students, we got a discount. So if you can't afford something like a Nova Flare or a Fusion Dust Removal System, get something that's going to at least somewhat extract that dust away from you. And so I think if you can't afford something, get something like this that comes with the bags. So I have this for in case I, I don't know why I have this. Maybe it's because it's from school and I just can't, don't have the heart to get rid of it just yet. An e-file, I really feel that that is going to make a huge difference in your services, is investing in an e-file. And I have the Erica MT20. This was another goal I had set for myself to save up and purchase. And I purchased this before I did purchase my desk. I did have a couple, I went through two cheaper e-files and I'm not going to mention their names because there's, there's just no point. Lamps. Make sure you have, I would suggest getting yourself, you, you need at least one lamp. I have two lamps. I would recommend two lamps because that way you're, you're not doing this with your client's hands or you're not moving your lamp from side to side. Your clients can sit there, they're comfortable, they can stick one hand in the lamp and then their other hand in the other lamp and this is the lamp that I use is the Fusion uh, LED UV lamp. Um, I started out with uh, an on Vogue UV lamp and I loved it. It gave me no problems whatsoever. And then Good companies job. were selling UV LED gels and I thought I really want to take the time to um, work on my shaping and my product application and the time that my client hands sit in a lamp for two minutes each time was just drawing out the service. I, w I would invest in at least one lamp is a must-have and I would suggest it being an LED UV lamp. Oh, uh, Light Elegance has one, On Vogue has one, I believe Accents even has, um, I think they're called hybrid lamps. Those are probably the three big must-have or like more expensive must-haves that I think a nail tech should at least work towards. Another thing is, is a must have is having proper lighting over top of your desk. I have two slim lights that I mentioned in one of my videos. The one I had, I was frustrated with, I didn't like. I went out and I purchased another one exactly the same. I have two on my desk that come across 
this way so they sit over here and I find I don't even concentrate on my lights anymore. I'm not moving them around. I, I can see what I'm doing. I'm really, really happy with two of them. But I think a must have is you need at least one. It doesn't have to be this one. This is the slim light and it just sort of clips on the side of your desk. Or you can get the ones that um, sit on your desk. I know uh, Amazon sells some daylight lamps. You can try those, they're really inexpensive. But as long as you have something over top of your desk where you can see, I think that is a must have. Something that you might not even think of. I didn't think of it when I first started out as a nail tech. A must have is a good, comfortable chair for yourself and for your client. Oh my goodness, I had a vanity stool that I sat on and when first doing nails, it took me four hours to do a French manicure. Four hours. My poor daughter. <laughs> And I sat on this vanity stool and I'm telling you my butt was so sore and It wasn't fun. I didn't like doing nails because I was so uncomfortable and I had my dining room chair Which is not that comfortable because it had um, Iron rods in the back for the back support. That's what the chairs would pad a padding to sit down on and iron rods in the back. Like how comfortable is that for a client? So I went to, um, it was HomeSense and I found a, a chair for my client and I've heard no complaints. So I guess it must be okay. And I have to say that the chair that I have now kind of squeaks. I don't know if you can hear that. It's not the most comfortable, but at least it's better than the vanity stool. So that is something on my goal list to invest in is a better chair. So I think that is a must have is a comfortable chair for yourself. Towels. I think that is probably a good must have for a new nail tech. Um, I have, I, I went to Home Outfitters and I bought these are just cream colored towels. They're hand towels. Uh, I bought six of them. They were inexpensive. And then I found some at Superstore. Same thing, just a hand towel, a different color. You can use them as armrests for your client. I put them underneath that dust extractor I had to help collect the dust. Or you can get a really inexpensive armrest. Um, I don't know if it's so much as a must have, but I think for expense wise, it's not that much money. So it's not a bad idea to invest in it. And I got this one off of eBay and there's a zipper on the back. So you can take this off and you can wash it. Um, I usually do put paper towel over top of it. Speaking of paper towel, that is a must have. Have a roll of paper towel. I have one sitting right on the floor here. Um, I go through a lot of paper towels. Something that I didn't know about, but I quickly learned about, have a policy set for, for your salon that your clients know and they can respect and they, they know up front what to expect when they step into your salon and get a service done by you. Um, I will put a link in the description box of my website and feel free to look at my policy page and uh, and take any part of that you like and implement that into your own policy. Okay, let's get into a few products. The other thing is don't forget, protect yourself when you're doing your services. So I think a must haves in that area is um, an apron. Get an apron, save your clothes, get it from the dust, get an apron. And gloves, I just recently started wearing um, gloves and they're these gloves. Um, they're latex free, I love them for doing services. I actually feel kind of awkward when I don't wear them. I don't want to get any kind of a condition where I'm going to have to stop doing what I love. So protect yourself. Um, even if a dust mask is something you're thinking about it, try it out. I don't wear one because my, my desk bed works amazingly well. So an apron and gloves I think are good items to have on your must have list. Wipes are important. So you guys have probably seen the wipes that are my favorite and they are the pure cotton ones. Get them at Nail Techniques. Just these ones. Another must have is a cuticle pusher. I use this in every service. Um, one side pushes the cuticles back and this side will get the leftovers that didn't get 
pushed away from the nail. Uh, another must have are files. Um, I, and I think as you get more experienced in your career, you're going to know what file works for you and what files don't. I have three files that I use. So files are a must have. This here is just a square file, okay, and it's an 80 grit. I love this file to get a nice, crisp shape, clean. Um, this is my go-to file for shaping. Then I have a 150 grit file, and this is great for finished filing, for smoothing out the nail. And then my other file, more, it's a buffer. It's just a, this blue buffer, and this is a 100 grit buffer. And all of these I have purchased at Nail Techniques and they are my favorite. Find out what your favorite nail file is and those are obviously must-haves. If you are a new nail tech and an e-file is something you trained with during school, a must-have is a mandrel. This is a medium coarse zebra sanding band. So I would say that these two, if you don't have a whole selection of bits as a new nail tack, this would be, but you do have an e-file, this would be a must have. And if you took training with your e-file in school, a cuticle um, skiver, 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 this little bit that does cuticles. So those are probably my two must haves for an e-file. Um, other bits, I'm not even going to go into them because as a new nail tech, I think that that can be a little bit overwhelming of what bit to get for your e-file. Another must have, a dust brush. It's just something learned in school is file, brush the dust away, file, brush the dust away because you, you think you can see what you're doing when you're filing, but as soon as you brush the dust away, you're like, oh my goodness, how come I didn't see that? Well, because obviously the dust was in the way. So. Any kind of um, dust brush I think is a must have. I don't know if this is a must have, but it's so inexpensive that why not? I think you'll be happy that you did put it on your list. And it's just a brush holder. So it's just something you can stick your brushes on so you don't get gel all over your um, desk. Something else that's pretty inexpensive. <laughs> actually, I got this. It's a, just a ceramic tile. I actually didn't pay for this tile. I went into Home Depot and I grabbed this. Well, you can't just buy one, ma'am. You have to uh, buy like a whole box. And I go, but I only want one. And I went, I, I, I literally did this, but I only want one. He goes, take it, it's free. He put a, a little note on this, demo free, do not charge it. <laughs> so, so if you need a ceramic tile, just go into Home Depot and, you know, blink your eyelashes. <laughs> this is something I wished I knew from day one. I really do. And it is a primer. I think this is imperative to implement into your service. First thing you would put on after doing your prep have a primer. Whatever your favorite bonder is, this is just what I use, which is the Light Elegance Tack. A builder gel. Fusion 5 is an awesome builder gel. Light Elegance Clear Fiber is an awesome builder gel. So um, you could put that on your list as anything. It doesn't have to be Fusion or Light Elegance, any brand that you're familiar with. Have a primer, a bonder, a builder gel. I also would suggest a white gel, um, more of a in a builder consistency for French manicures, I know. and a thinner viscosity gel like SL Clear from Fusion or One Step from Light Elegance. Or and I'm sorry I can't name any other um, thinner viscosity gels out there. You know I'm just not familiar with the brands. I'm sure Accents has a great one. Amore must have a great one. So many brands of gel lines out there. So. Uh, whatever brand you want to use. So those are must-haves. Another must-have I think is, is a good idea is Q-tips. Just so this is where I keep my Q-tips. Also cotton balls. It doesn't hurt to have a uh, jar of cotton balls. Um, I use these for ac acetone if I have to remove nail polish from my client's hands. So I'll use cotton balls. Okay other must-haves. Cleanser. Whatever brand you're using, I think for a new nail tech, I probably would stay with all one brand, from your primer to your top coat, including your cleanser if possible. Um, so cleanser is a must have. I've, if you've watched my videos, you know how much I love Fusion's watermelon cleanser. So I've been using Fusion's cleanser 
probably, I want to say probably a month after I got my certification. Cuticle oil. That is so important. I really feel you must have a cuticle oil and it doesn't matter the brand. I don't think that's just my personal opinion. I have three different cuticle oils, Fusion Cuticle Oil, I have Light Elegance Cuticle Oil, and I also have En Vogue Cuticle Oil. I find that they're all compar comparable. They all work really, really well. And it's probably whatever I'm in the mood for. You know, not what my client's in the mood for, but what I'm in the mood for. Um, another must have is, and it doesn't have to be this brand, but preempt. And this is my, um, this is a one-step surface cleaner and disinfectant. And I use this in my lamps and I use it on top of my desk. For cleaning my bits, I will put it in a cleaner that's made for bits, my carbide bits that won't destroy them. Another must have, and, and I say this because my clients love it, is to have a jar of lotion. My clients love this Avo juice from OPI, and this is Peony and Poppy. And um, this is not a must have, but I think one, if you do try this, this is something that you won't live without. And this is LCN's Super Shine Finish Cleaner, and this is the last step of a service that I use on my clients. I know this might be a little bit pricey. I mean, not like a, a desk event or an e-file, but I think what's really important for a new tech to have is, this is Leela. Yes, I named my hand after one of my YouTube followers, Leela. So this is Leela. I use her all the time um, to practice on. If I don't, you know, want to practice on my own hands, and if I really like a set I've done on myself and I don't want to take them off, I will use my practice hand. Um, I've had clients send me pictures and say, "Can you do this?" And I'm thinking, "Well, yeah, I probably can." I usually say yes, but I will practice. Like I, I practice these two. I don't know if you can see this design right here I practiced and then these were the um, vetro gels that I wanted to see what looked like inside of um, a stamped image. Um, I use this hand a lot. A lot of my clients think it's creepy because I usually have it sitting on the side of my desk and it's just sort of hanging there over there. So I've had several clients say that thing is just creepy. So sorry Leela. <laughs> Another must-have, and I don't know why I didn't mention this sooner, these are these must-haves are not in any particular order. So hopefully you have a pen and paper and are jotting this down. And it is a brush. Now, I would suggest not just one brush. Whatever your favorite brush is, if the brush that you learned to use in school is something you really like, then I would probably invest in getting two more brushes like that. One for clear gel, one for your dark gels, and one for your lighter gels. Three more, and one for glitters. So you have a brush set aside for each of those types of gels. Um, trust me and I, when I say that you will be thankful that you have brushes for light, dark colors, and clear gels because there's nothing worse than sticking a brush into a white gel and you've used it on say like a dark blue and it comes you haven't cleaned your brush as well as you thought you did and the color gets transferred into the white that's just totally frustrating these are three brushes that I've had almost since day one after I got my certification this is fusions detailer brush and I use this for doing French manicures for creating that smile line I like it because one it's got a cap I think if you're going to get brushes, this is my personal opinion, try to see if they have a cap. This will protect your brush from, in case any sunlight gets into your salon, you don't want your brushes to harden from the sunlight. My other brush that I use for applying clear gels is my Sculpture Brush from Fusion. For me, that's a must have. I find that, I don't know, I'm able to work the gel onto the nail when I'm sculpting the nail out really, really easy. And I, I think Fusion did a fantastic job in, in shaping their brushes to help you with a certain application like sculpting or the detailer brush for doing smile lines. 
And my other must-have brush, and I would really recommend you investing in one of these, is Fusion Speed Shine brush. I use this to apply top coat. I know techs have used this for applying color. Keep this one strictly for my Extreme Shine or, or Actually, I really only use Extreme Shine or if I use a no wipe top coat, it's got a brush right in it. But these are my three must-have brushes along with the ones that I use for colors are my um, Ugly Duckling gel brushes. Those are four, I would say, must-have brushes. Again, that is my opinion. Okay, kind of in the same brush category, um, I found it really helpful to have a smaller bristled like a really fine detailer brush. This is great for when you are applying color and you want to get right close to the sidewall or the cuticle. Um, it's really, these types of brushes are, <laughs> these types of brushes are really good for control to get your color right close to the cuticle. Another must have is a dotting tool. This is also good for putting your gels close to the cuticle or the sidewalls without getting on the skin. Um, I love the marble look on it and this is just my favorite. Have a set of tips. These are just tips from the drugstore. Um, I think they're Kiss brand. I actually really like these because of the color. They're kind of a nude color so they give the, the look of a free edge color. They're inexpensive or you can buy tips from your supplier, whatever you prefer. But I think having a set of tips if you prefer to extend the nails with tips. And don't forget forms. That's a must have. These are um, Max Estrada's forms. They are the Exclusive nail couture forms from Max Estrada. <laughs> you don't necessarily need these ones. Just a roll of forms, maybe that you used in school that you liked, um, but having those on hand is a must have because you are gonna get clients in that want their nails extended. So you're gonna have to learn either to put tips on and extend the nails that way or sculpt them on a form. For starting out, for colors, if money is a concern, I know we all want every product, every color that's out there, but sometimes the bank account says otherwise. So if you're just starting out and don't know what colors to get, I would suggest a, a white, a black, a pink, a red, even a blue, whether it be a light blue or a darker blue, purple, and a greeny type color. See my cup back there? Maybe a green like that. I know Fusion's got Dragonfly. Um, they've come, uh, Light Elegance has some lighter, I think it's mint chocolate. Having maybe one or two of those colors that I mentioned um, is a good idea to have to start out. Um, as for glitters, I would go with a silver glitter a gold glitter, pink glitter. I don't know why a pink glitter, but I think in my client base, pinks and purples are very popular. So that in a solid color and a glitter, I think you would be happy with having to start out with. I think one piece of advice I had before I went to school was from my nail tech, she said, learn how to stamp. That is gonna be your savior. And she was absolutely right. So what did I do? I think I went to a drugstore and I found a kit as seen on TV and I bought it. It was only like 15 bucks and it came with like 20 image plates, a stamper and a scraper. It didn't go so well. I had a hard time picking up images with that stamper. And then I was introduced to caption by Young Nails. The caption stamper is this. This just made stamping and with their stamping plates and their polishes, a dream to work with. And then I was introduced to Mini Manny Moo and I fell in love with that brand and it made stamping even easier. And then um, Clear Jelly Stamper. Now Clear Jelly Stamper is a little bit of a different technique. I wouldn't be afraid of it, but it is different. I do have a video up on how to use that product, but their polishes are amazing. Their plates, um, they, they've got new ones coming out and they're really, etched deep so it's easier to pick up an image so I'm really liking 
clear jelly stamper plates. But I think a stamper like this, find a couple. Um, I am going to say that for stamping polishes, the clear jelly stamper stamping polishes are amazing. I've never had an issue with any one of them. Mini Manny Moo, their stamping polishes are amazing and I find that I don't have to rush to transfer my image. I can take my time. I'm starting to lose my voice. Um, captions polishes. I'm going to be honest and say that not all of them are great for stamping. Some of them are too sheer. Um, they're silver, they're gold, they're white, they're black. Those are four staple colors no matter what brand you use for stamping I think you should have in your collection to start out with. And then once you get the hang of it, venture out into different colors. Um, that would be my suggestion. I think that is about it. But comment down below if you have any questions. I do try to answer each and every one of you. If I don't actually physically type something out, I will put a heart beside your comment or a thumbs up that I've liked your comment. So if you have a question about a must-have for a new tech, feel free to comment down below. If you can think of something that I haven't mentioned, by all means comment down below because there might be that new nail tech out there that you have thought of they should have as a must have and I didn't mention it. So I think if we can help new techs out there, um, that's a good thing. I think we need to support each other. We need to be there for each other. We need to be encouraging and uplifting. And I'm going to end this on one other must have as a new, new tech. Surround yourself with like-minded people. Get involved in um, with groups on Facebook, on YouTube, and surround yourself with positive people. And hopefully you have family that's supporting you as well so you can um, really excel in this career because there can be times where it's discouraging, you get negative comments. Just having that support system, that group of people that have been through the same thing you've been through, and they can give you suggestions of what they've done that have helped them and pass it on to you. Um, I hope this has helped you as a new nail tech. Um, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. I Follow me on my social media. I have Facebook and Instagram and that is about it. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope there was something that you could take away that helped. Um, that is it. I'm starting to lose my voice. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed this and until the next video we will see you guys again soon. Bye guys.